Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it's nice to look on the screen and see yourself on the screen. You know? Amen. How are we doing today? Just stand on your feet, shake two or three people, find out how they're doing today. You know, find out how they're doing today. Pay attention. Samora, you didn't greet anybody. You were just talking to your friend. Oh, that's the person we're asking. How is he doing? Or is your friend? Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, all right. So fasting starts tomorrow. Um, fasting starts tomorrow. Hey, hey! I'm excited. Ah, yesterday I had this um, unhealthy. I had like a small piece of cake. I said, wow, why am I eating this? I said, fasting starts tomorrow. I can eat all I can this weekend because from tomorrow, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> so I saw one of, our, one of our online members that owns a cake store, Salt. I don't know if you know the cake, Salt. So I saw it yesterday. I said, the cake you sent me for Christmas, I've not been able to eat it. I said, since Christmas, now the cake is in the fridge. He said, Pastor, eat it today. He said, fasting starts on Monday. You burn everything. You know, I said, that's a good thing. I should eat it today. So I'm not sure if I can eat it today. You know, but the basic thing that fasting starts tomorrow, I want to really encourage all of you to participate. It will be life, life changing for so many people. Really, really life changing for many people. And at the end of it comes Wine Press Conference. And we're doing it in a bigger place. So because we're getting this big of the auditorium, I think we all should gather together, make sure we're there, and get all your friends over there. One thing you want to do for Wine Press is this. You want to pray, you want to invite your friends, and you want to serve. So because we're getting this place that has 5,000 people, we need like hundreds and hundreds of ushers. So, you know, um, if you want to join the workforce, there will be a link that you can snap and you can join. You can just join for Wine Press. I would love to be an usher. I would love to be a greeter. I would love to do... Are you telling me to join something? You're telling me to join. What, what should they join? Ushering. Come, come and join ushering. But do you have the card to join? Or is it going to be... Yeah. Exactly. Take and join. And what are you joining? Give him a card also. Two of them will join the ushering. It will support. No, no, give him a card also. I give him a card. Yes. You already filled one. Reach that to, to the choir. Okay. But I'm not sure you can perform for wine press. So, so don't worry. Just join, for, just join the ushering for this one. Praise God. You know. Yeah. 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 And when I came up, it's good that you're saying that the Spirit of God actually sent me to you. And he told me that you must always remember that I love you. God told me to tell you that. He says, you must, as soon as I came up, you were the image that came to my spirit. And the spirit of God says to you, he said, you must know I love you. And I know you. And I'm letting you know that even though I know you, I love you. And people on the outside see a vibrant you. He said, but I see the pain. And I see what happened in the past, especially when you were growing up. He said, and I love you. And I have a great future for you. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's okay to cry. It's, a, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Just take a moment and take it in. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. As soon as I came up, I saw a vision and I saw you from the age of seven. And I can tell you more. As soon as I came up, I saw a vision from the age of seven. Praise God. And that's how the Spirit of God moves because I saw it, but what happens is that it's not everything I can say, you know, so I just move on, you know, but as I made the announcement and it spoke, it just came back to me like that. I saw this. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So you must remember that, right? And if, the, if God is sending me to you in this service, yeah, if God is sending me to you in this service, that has something. 
So you must remember, there's no need, there's no need to hide. He sees everything, so go back to him. Go back to him. Go back to him. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Amen. We had a very holy, holistic second service. I, I could not even preach at all. I was just ministering from person to person. Tell me, why are you so confused, Sister Spirit? Yeah. Maybe I should just flow as the Spirit of God is showing me, right? Yeah, I should do that. Because Tell me is my assistant here. I never paid attention to her. You are in between decisions, but you have allowed your confusion to stay. It says, you know what I'm asking you to do, but you're moving in between opinions, and it's time to settle it. You know what the Lord is talking about? You do, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we worship you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you glory. So what happens is this, during the fasting and prayer season, because one was say fasting ahead, the spiritual senses become really very sharp. So it just moves that way. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Worship you, Lord Jesus. What do you want me to do? Mm. Okay, I'm going to go back to try to teach. I really want to teach. I really, really want to teach. You know, the reason why I teach is that teaching changes mindset and feeds the spirit. Prophetic ministration helps in the now. But you will not be able to hold on to something eventually. Yeah. I pray for that person. I don't want to call you out. You're almost going through a divorce. That God will give you wisdom from this way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can I take five more minutes? You sure? Yeah, because the Spirit of God just seems to be speaking to me. Even people I knew before, like, I'm just having words for them. Yeah. Come. With the plated hair. Yeah, come. The guy in grey, come with the beards. You, you're looking by side. You, I'm talking to you. No, no not you. The Spirit of God says, this is a year for you to step out of your comfort zone and do bigger things. He says, there are thoughts are put within you, but you've not been able to just act on it for many, for some time now. He said, this is the time to step out and do those things. Does it, does it ring a bell to you? You know, I'm talk, what am I talking about? It's your business. So what do you have to do this year? You've been trying to what? You've been trying to start your own business, but you've not been able to do that. So this year you're going to take a step and God is going to grant you grace. Hallelujah. I want to put my hands around you and tell you, I see you're really struggling emotionally because of things that happened in the past especially the ones you see that nobody knows and things that happened many years ago and you really struggle and you have your moments even though you love Jesus and sometimes you feel as if I'm, I'm not good enough and the spirit of God is saying to me to tell you my spirit is within you and I love you and I put my grace upon you God is saying to you that this year it's a new beginning. It's a new beginning. It's a new beginning. In Jesus' name. Does any of these things, do you understand what I'm talking about? You do? So what are you going to do differently? What? Give me a microphone. Yeah, tell me. So I started a new business and I was about quitting, even quitting the media team. 
here in church because it was a lot of pressure. But I spoke with my mom today and she told me to go ahead and still serve God and continue with the business. So I'm pushing. I'll be back in the media. That's a wonderful name, Jesus. That's a wonderful name. I'm going to lay my hands on you. Well, that the power of the Holy Ghost, not by power, not by might. I know, hallelujah, that's wonderful. Wave your hands and just worship it, close your eyes and worship it. Lord, thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. This is what I will say to you. Whatever you do this season, make sure you are fasting from tomorrow. Whatever your plan is, make sure you are in wine press. It will be life-changing. When God wants to change a man, he brings him into a meeting. There was a place Jacob met with God. There was a place Saul met with Samuel. There was a place David met with Samuel. Because God encounters come through meetings and his people. So this one place is a place of encounter for you. And we're believing God for several things. We're believing for 1,000 people to get born again. We're believing that 3,500 people that have struggled with marital delays, it's will be broken. We're believing that there will be 10,000 financial career and business miracle. We're believing that there will be 2,500 people that were sick, had barrenness issues that will be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And everyone that will come will have an encounter, will receive clear direction in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and you know, as a ministry that there's the Holy Ghost is talking to a lot of people. The Holy Ghost will just be like, say this to this person because he's a master communicator. So he just talks to people, you know, like that, you know. Hallelujah. You know, amen. Please let me let me teach all right okay let's come back come back come back come back come back come back the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet yeah So this service is very different throughout this month. The things you went through is meant to help other people. So it's not a loss. It's benefits. Yeah. So it's begin to see the benefits. Yeah. And um, the lady, the lady here yeah, with the band, the Spirit of God is speaking to you. It's guiding you. Yeah, it's speaking to you. It's guiding you. Even right now, as I began to minister, there were moments of the spirit that you had because he was answering your question so just be attentive to what he's saying praise God yeah. the, the, spiritual, the spiritual world is very powerful though, I'm telling you in the spiritual world you can, you can be here and move things in another country 
you can be because in the spiritual world there's no distance that's why occultic people can be here and affect someone in the u.s that's how powerful the spiritual world can alter the future without going they will stay here and alter the future the reason why is that time is a part is a is a is a time is a component of the physical world in the spiritual world it's not like that so that's why when you get to heaven you don't see old men we are ageless because the concept of time is in this world so when you see jesus christ guess what when you see jesus christ when we see him you're going to see 33 and a half years old man he will not age just as he was you know you know when jesus christ went to heaven he went with his body the bible says he ascended bodily into heaven so it's not as if we got to heaven and another body no the bible says and when he's in heaven the bible says this man jesus christ you see him is not multi-sex he's a man he's 33 and a half years old only that his body is perfected that means the wrinkle all of those kind of things because the bible says in first Corinthians 15 it says when we come into resurrection it says the imperfect body shall become perfect that's why in heaven you never see blind lame or crippled you know why whatever is imperfect in their body the moment they have a resurrected body it shall be what perfected praise god hallelujah pay attention to the holy spirit don't be a stubborn christian that some of you must train yourself learn to learn to know that as a christian i move by spiritual dimensions i see you must understand there's natural progress when you work and in business you talk and you make this kind of progress but that's not the progress i'm talking about i'm talking about progress that is 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 catapulted by the work of the holy ghost this there are things that the work of the spirit and i'm all, some of you are very like oh what's he talking about it's okay if you don't understand i've moved no, there's math, there's further math. We're now in further spirits. It's okay, we'll come to the level of the, we'll come there. But as a Christian, I'm telling you, listen, there was a time that there was a battle between Joshua and Israel. Moses said, Joshua, go and fight. He said, I will kneel down here with the rod of God. The Bible says, as he raised up the rod, that Joshua was winning. Then Moses became tired. He pulled down his hand. What happened? The people began to win. How does rod influence things? It is the influence of the spirit. That, you see, is the work of the spirit. Uh, don't play with the work of the spirit. Though. The work of the spirit is remote control function. That's what I call it. You don't see it, but it changes channel. You know that if you want to punish someone, you just did the remote control. They don't know they are watching TV. You'll be changing it. We'll change the channel. And they won't, they're frustrated. But they're frustrated because the channel is getting changed. But it's a remote control function. It's a remote control function. So, from the realm of the spirit, you just be changing the season. Just be changing it. Praise God. If it's too high for you, you have to come higher. Glory to God. Okay, first Corinthians, first Kings chapter 20. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. First Kings chapter 20, verse 20. So in this service, this is a different series of service I'm doing in the fourth service. I'm really teaching on how to gain clarity and direction in this year. How to gain more clarity and direction this year. So I've, I've started teaching now. Father, thank you for guiding me and leading me and putting your word in my mouth. And thank you for this series in Jesus' name amen holy spirit thank you for working and me working with you in jesus name amen i'm putting my spirit together into a teaching anointing <laughs> you know praise the lord that relationship thing cannot come that way the lady in the green and blue the way this way it can't come this way yeah it can't come you know Avi? yeah because i'm seeing you in the spirit and i'm as i'm moving my hand you know what i'm moving it to mean okay praise the lord i i don't want to say more because it's a public space praise god First Kings chapter 20 verse 38. 
<laughs> someone says how does he see these things we should do that kind of seminar how to sin to the spirit because it's what every believer has the opportunity for yeah but you've been once prophetic right the lady in the in the middle you've had prophetic experiences this lady yeah huh so what, what why did he stop because he became careless right so when is he going to come back because as i was speaking i was seeing you in some years before where it was is it not true give her the microphone if it's not true it's not true if it's true it's true give her the microphone yeah give it why do you feel the mic i'm going to come to you you refuse my i'm going to come to you i'm going to give you the word of the lord to you yeah tell me yeah it was in my while i was in secondary school yeah you were prophetic i saw you in younger years i just said so yeah so what happened I became scared and careless and well i understand the part of the fear and this is why people don't walk in the things of the spirit i will tell you why I'm, I'm going to pray for you the power of god is going to come upon you now yeah when people walk in the things of the spirit they become very scared and the reason why you become scared is that you don't have knowledge because fear works on ignorance and instead of you to get knowledge you what you jump out of it so what you need to do is to get knowledge. There are certain Christian books you can read. There are certain company of people you can keep that can help you interpret your spiritual experiences. Just like Samuel. Someone demanded the voice of God until Saul helped him interpret that say what you heard is the voice of God. And don't be afraid. God is good and kind. Don't be afraid. You're afraid that you may make a mistake. And you, you make him say and correct yourself. There, there are times, I, you know, when I was younger, I thought I saw a vision that my grandmother would die. But she didn't die until about 10 years. In fact, she died after my father. But I had, I learned something from it. Because sometimes, you can't learn this in imperfection. I'm not afraid to tell you that I can make a mistake. But it's true my mistakes, I've learned how to be better. There's nobody I've given a word here now, today, that said, eh, I don't know what you have said. Because I've grown the gifts up to this point. And I'm careful not to do this often. The reason why I don't do this often, I don't want our church to become a miracle church where people come every Sunday, they will see vision to me. Mm -hmm. Our church, we love Jesus. We are not miracle seekers. Come and stand here. Wave your hands and thank him. Yeah. Wave your two hands and thank him. Thank you, Lord. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. <gasps> yeah, that's the power of the Holy Ghost. Fresh. Let your spiritual understanding open. Let it open. The eyes, the ears of your spirit. Let it open. Yeah. That's the power of God on her. That's the power of God on her. That's the power of God on her. That's the power of God. That's the power of God on her. Yeah. Yeah. That's the power of God on her. Someone says, why do these things happen? The way let me explain this and i will go back to my teaching the way the the same way when you take injection with we, we all respond a different way uh -huh, that's it when you have a spiritual operation we define operation some people come shouting some people come but the same thing so my, my sister in pink the hurt you have abandoned that has not healed needs to be healed yeah there's something that you've not paid attention to but it doesn't mean you've gotten over it but you packed it in a corner and left it there you didn't it's not as if you are sitting on it but you just packed it you didn't do it and left it there but from that place it's still affecting you don't you know what I'm talking about? 
you do. Thank you. Praise God. Somebody say thank you, Holy Spirit. Don't you like church today? Church on this is church unusual, right? Yeah. Somebody like, oh, what's going on right now? When are they going to call me? What's the next? Praise God. You are blessed. In Jesus' name. Help her. Help her up. Where, where are those that are meant to help her? Help her up. Yeah. Exactly. Help her. Yeah. Help her. A great church needs balance. So there's balance in that there's a lot of prayer, there's supernatural power of God, there's teaching, then there's human wisdom. So everything needs to come together. The problem with most churches is that they tilt towards one side. So you see a church that every day they're casting out demons is too much. And every day they're prophesying is too much. You need balance. Praise God. Okay, let's say three hallelujah. Hallelujah! hallelujah. Two! Three. You guys just sound like Celestia Church of Christ. <laughs> Praise God. But it's wonderful. It's wonderful. All right. So, this morning I'm talking about the importance of direction and clarity. Let me establish my points to you. Ecclesiastes, let's start from that because of time, because my time is far spent. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. And I'm going to give some of you the microphone to share and tell me what you what is going on? Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 14. See what the Bible says. The Bible says, a fool is full of words. A man that cannot tell what shall be. Who is a fool? A man that cannot tell what shall be. And what shall be after him? Who can tell him? He calls him a fool. The man has no direction. He says, he talks a lot. He, he has all this new resolution about how I'll make my marriage better, how this will be better. But the Bible calls him a fool. But see the next verse. The next verse says this. The next verse says this. No, no, no. Go, go back, go back, go back, go back. You've jumped too much. It says verse 15 now. See what the fool is. It says, now this foolish man, the labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them because he does not know how to what? Go into the city. Verse 16. Verse 16 says this. Woe unto the land where the king is what? A child. Why did he say woe? Woe means cursed. Because when the king is a child, they cannot get direction. It says, what unto them when the kings are and what the princes eat in the morning? Because instead of them to be given strategic direction, they are eaten. So he begins to talk about this issue of direction and clarity. So verse, verse 17, it says this, Blessed is the land where the king is and sons of the noble, and the princes eat in season for strength and not for what? Drunkenness. So let's go. Let's go one by one. Why is it important to have clarity? Have you noticed something? If I drive at night, you don't drive as fast as during the day. Yes or no? Why? Because it's dark. The clearer you see, the faster you go. Clarity brings about speed. The reason why a lot of people are stuck in life is that there is no clarity there is and when i say clarity there's no marital clarity there is no career clarity there is no business clarity so today in january i've seen people that for the past four years have done eight kind of businesses and you wonder why are you doing so many kind of businesses it's good to try a lot of things but when you talk to them you'll find that they're not clear sometimes i come across a girl or a guy and this is my girlfriend then i'm shocked you know i'm shocked because of how drastically they differ from who they did before i'm like why are you dating different kind of people it shows me that you yourself don't know exactly what you want because you can date different kind of persons but they should have a common line there's the kind of person you attract naturally so clarity and the reason I'm saying so is this. You must understand this. The more confused you are, the more your life is open to satanic attack. 
Someone say, how do you say so? Because the Bible says that God is not the author of what? Confusion. That means anywhere there's confusion, God is not there. Who is there? Satan. So, all of you that says, I'm confused about my future, what you're saying is that my future is under satanic attack. Clarity. So, in this service, in all truth, we're going to talk about, so, if you're clear about your future, tell me, you're clear about this year, I want you to tell me. Anybody that's clear about this year, share with me. Just raise your hands, want to learn from some people, share with me. Yes, give a lot the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me the area you are clear about and tell me what you're clear about. Yeah. Or well, I'll take the microphone. Yeah. Put it on here. I'm clear. I'm clear about what I want to achieve. Clear in, in what area now? In my business. In your business. So, so can you tell me one thing, one of those things you're clear about? I mean, I'm clear about our strategic goals. Yeah, just one of the goals. Just give me one of the goals. Our the one you can share. Our revenue target. Your revenue target. Okay. Good. So, it's an exact figure, right? Yes, it is. It's an exact figure. You know why clarity is powerful? Once you are very clear, you will see how to achieve it. Because once you are clear, your mind works like a magnet. Your mind will attract to you what you are clear about. Your mind will attract to you what you are clear about. Okay, that's one person. Who else is clear about this year? And any other person? Yes, there's this brother over here. Thank you. The teaching anointing is back. Yeah, tell me. Okay, uh, I think I'm also clear about my business. Okay. About a particular product we are about to launch this year. So, so this year you're going to launch a product. What's the name of the product? Or do you have a name already? We have a name. But already. you can't say it right now, right? Absolutely. Okay, that's fantastic. So, what are the project? So, when you launch it, what what are you clear about? Are you clear about the results you will get this year? We are clear about our approach to launch it. We are also clear about the figures we expect. What figures? Tell me the figures. <laughs> I don't also know if that's what I want to um, see on a public. You don't want to say publicly. Okay, yeah. okay, that that's fine. That's fine. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Are you? We clear about something. So the question is this. The question is that, what? Just notice, everybody write this down. Whatever you're not clear about, you cannot achieve. Whatever you're not clear about, you cannot what achieve. Whatever you're not clear about. So the reason I'm saying so is that this is a new year. What are you clear about? What do you want to achieve? If I just say that, um, I call you on the phone. Hello, this is Pastor. Meet me here now. The next question is, where is here? The reason why is that if you don't know where here is, there's nowhere to go. A lot of people are driving fast. See, speed with that direction is useless. Because you can be running this way with speed. Meanwhile, you should be going this way. So the major thing, and you must understand something. The major thing about people that do well is that number one, they have clarity. So let's list areas for you to have clarity. Number one, do you have financial clarity do you have marital clarity do you have career or business clarity do you have that clarity in your mind glory to god i said glory to god so let's go back to the verse let's go back to the verse here, um, Ecclesiastes 10 verse 15 see what the bible says here see what the bible says it says the labor of everyone full, weak, of everyone wearies every one of them because it does not know how to go into the city so this person has the clarity that i want to go to the city but it doesn't know how to what go there so we're teaching about clarity right now so how do you so how do you have clarity number one this is how you have clarity because i want to make this snappy focus on outcomes not task so if you heard the people that spoke they said i have my revenue figures so maybe one of them is saying that oh i know that this year i'm going to do 250 million now it's so clear focus on outcomes what most of us call outcomes are not outcomes I'm going to delve into that issue of clarity. I need more people to give me examples of clarity. If you're not clear, tell me what you're not clear about. So you can raise up your hands. If you're not clear, I'm not clear about this here. You know, I'm not clear. We need to, because the thing is that you cannot hit a target if you don't know what your target is. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. 
Okay, so let's get the microphone. Move, move. So tell me, tell me. There's someone in the choir. Yes, please. Okay, about the clarity, I'm very clear about my Abuja branch. I'm opening my fashion academy, Abuja branch. Come, At come, come. Come and speak here. You need to speak because you told me something yesterday. You need to speak. This is a testimony of a change, of a transform life. Come and stand here. Say what, tell me what you told me yesterday. Oh, okay. So, um, I was telling my pastor yesterday that when I joined Hold on. ICC, I want the camera to focus on her. <laughs> Don't leave me out of this. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so when I joined HICC, I was not working, but I later got a job at Get Arena, and my salary was 15000 So every Sunday, I always rushed to work. I wouldn't stay till the end of the service. So one Sunday, Kemi called me, and I was like, Prudence, this work you are doing, how much are they paying you? And I said fifteen. He said, that's why you don't stay in choir? So there was a day Mr. Shea said, if you know you don't have anything you're doing and you want to start something, raise up your hand. So it was just me and Daniel. And then he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I don't really know. But when I go home and I was praying, I remember what the pastor was saying about our minds. Then in 2016, this was in 2016, and then I gave one of my outfits to a tailor to help me fix and it, it has a lot of issues. So I had to tell myself I want to learn this tailoring. And after the training, I did the first job and it was 1,000. I didn't touch this money for three months because what, I was what? happy, 1,000 there. Okay. I just started a dress for someone. So I kept that money for three months. I was crying. I was like, so something can actually come out of my hands. But today, I'm running like the biggest fashion academy in Africa. <laughs> Me Mark, now me Mark was the person who always give me shoes to wear in the choir. Now me Mark was giving you shoes to wear in the choir. Yes, I never had uniforms. I don't have transport. Sometimes I talk to people outside the church. If you are going to Aja, please can I join you? Then there was no bus. But right now I don't know what I did to God. He has been blessing me. When you spoke to the first person here, when you were talking to him. And God was just showing my friend how she has been suffering. And I just transferred 500000 to her to start a business. Hold on. I, you know, I told her as a ministry, God is touching people. God was telling her that person, help somebody else. And he transferred 500000 This was someone. What? This was someone that did not, what they call it, did not have shoes. They will borrow our shoes. Look for drop me. Look at what the Lord has done. See, this is why it's called happy. This is why we say we change lives. This is what we do. This is what, in case you hear yeah, by chance, this is what we do. We change lives. We will teach, we will pray, we will coach, we will support. We will stay until your mind is radically Yes, yes, yes. I even got about 20 something thousand from benevolence for my house rent because I was crying that day that my landlord is going to send me up. I have about five apartments, millions of money, and I'm already talking about opening Abuja branch. All my staff are saying, I don't want to go to Abuja. Abuja, there's How many no staff security. Do you have? I have over 30 something staff, I have two cars. And I'm building house for my mom. Like God. Oh my God. Just in the space of five years. <laughs> hey, shout, 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 shout. Twenty twenty was another year. Well, I never knew that I was going to make it. I was just. I kept having dreams. People call me. Your academy exploded and they took you to Kirikiri. Every, every, every day, people keep having dreams and I cried and I prayed to God. I never knew it was a dream that would take me from one level to another level. And after that year, when I was shouting Happy New Year, I called my mom. I said, Mommy, I made it. I didn't die because the death threat was so much. And I've been a blessing to a lot of people. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, I mean, my eyes are full of tears. And the reason why they're full of tears is that this is why I signed up for this. 
I didn't sign up for this to be the richest pastor, to be the biggest pastor. I signed up if you can find one more person and we can change. And, and yesterday I came for the quarry house as I was going. She just ran and said that I wanted to tell me that you changed my life. And I said, tell me your story. And today, I mean, we're just doing a random teaching and she spoke about their butcher branch. And because I saw her yesterday, on Friday, I could recall the story. And you know I'm saying this to you because some of you want to give up on life. And you have a friend that is borrowing shoes from you. Bring them here. Tell them that we, we can, God can use us to change their life. I told you, God encounters our true people. God will not come down from heaven. He didn't come down from heaven to touch Saul. He used somebody. Praise God. Thank you. Back to your Abuja question. It wasn't a question. Yeah, I was me. raising my hand. No, I, I had clarity. I just have clarity that there is no way I will open Abuja branch. I will not have more than 50 students. But my limit is 50. 50. So I have, yes, I have people who say, oh, Abuja doesn't work. Abuja doesn't work. But me, when I reach there, when I get to Abuja, they will rush me. Praise God. Thank you. So, so I, I wanted to notice how all of them are speaking. She even knows the amount of students she wants. Did you not know that we're praying for one press? We want 10,000 days. Have you ever heard any church that pray like that? We, we're telling God the amount of, we don't say do miracles. We say, Lord, do this amount. That extreme clarity. Okay, if you're struggling with having clarity, can you raise up your hands, please? Let's share. You're struggling. Is that lady sharing? That lady? Yeah, let me ask her if she is. Did you raise up your hand? Are you struggling with clarity? Okay. We struggling with having clarity. There's someone in the mid in the back. Yeah, thank you. There's this. Yeah. 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 Praise God. Wow, I love our church. I love our church. I love our church. I love our church. You can actually have your seat. You don't have to stand. But put the microphone close to your mouth so we can hear you. Okay. So um in my case it's uh clarity per two different jobs they okay. are both like equally bad on pros and cons but i'm not just like sure which one to go for you know okay so you need to elaborate if you want me to help you yeah so um yeah two jobs right yes two okay. jobs so one is like a fintech the other one is like a, a moderator for investment banks okay yes so both are equal pay uh similar roles uh marketing roles and um for me is a case of like choosing one that helps me as far as like my life then it's where i want to excellent go. so the two of them offer you equal pay but you don't know the one to choose right yes good so let me tell you what will make you choose oh um can i ask you for your age just give me a range i'm below this i'm above this that kind of thing where are I'm you? 27. 27. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Oh, wow. You, you, are, you have a whole life in front of you. When you're 60, what do you want to be? What do you want me to be remembered that when you're 60? If I see you at 60, if I want to call you something, what will I call you? Uh, definitely someone that has done something like in the marketing. So it's basically someone, someone that's that, done what? That's transformed marketing. marketing. So, so, someone that's transformed marketing. Okay. Someone that's transformed marketing. That's fine. So one does have some marketing. Okay, that's fine. So the first role is an investment in the bank. What, what would you be doing for them? Brand and corporate management. Okay. The other one is what? In the fintech? Uh, product and uh, brand marketing. Okay. Which one will give you more opportunity for you to learn and grow to become who you want to be in the future? So that... that, that in the bank, will you not just follow established guidelines? Yes. In the fintech, will you have the opportunity to create an experiment? I will be able what, to do that. In what do you think you should be going to? Fintech. I didn't tell you where you should go to. I just asked you questions and say, if this is your future, which is leading you to your future and which is taking you away from your future? And you said by yourself that is a fintech because... If you want to grow, then you get the opportunity to grow there. All right. Yeah, you may consider that. Praise the Lord. Okay. Who else lacks clarity? So, 
you know why we could find clarity because i asked him one question what is what is outcome he was looking at the job because the jobs are not outcome the job are pathways the jobs are what pathways so like the scripture says the way of the foolish will create every one of them because he doesn't know how but if you know your outcome then you can know your pathway praise god hallelujah what else you have want to ask a question yes yes all right so i feel like i've been facing a lot of challenges and um i really don't know one step i'm meant to take next with my life like with my future and everything i've been going i've been having a lot of opportunities i supply cement to real estate companies what is your question and my question is i literally don't know so i've been trying to do a vision board for this year and i can't do it because what is i don't question? know what to do this year you don't know what to do this year i don't know okay. i don't know where i'm what, I'm, what, ne- what step i'm meant to make next what's your name i can call me how old are you 23 sir 23 yes sir. oh my god do anything <laughs> you know why 23 is it eight, eight, if you got i'm not saying you will if you mess up your life you fix it again <laughs> do anything but but let me help you let me help you i can come in praise god i can come in at 60 what do you want to be i want to be retired at 60. retired from what either being a politician or a businessman I'm okay not sure so you want to be a politician or business. it's good because you're young so you, you don't have to know what you're doing you know politician or businessman okay good that's fine so this is your outcome right yes sir what do you do right now uh so i'm supporting my dad for the campaign that's coming up so your dad is a politician yeah he is okay so you're moving so you're here supporting your dad for so are you I'm, doing that as a role or you're doing that as a son as a son but like learning from him practically okay okay what kind of business do you want to own at 60? Uh, so I feel like I want to go into real estate because right now... No, 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 you don't have to explain why you want to do anything to me. So I, I want to go into real estate. I'm not God, so you don't have to explain to yeah, me. I just want, you know. I want to go into real estate. I want to go into real estate. Yeah. Let me help you. This is my advice to you. I will start by learning a skill. I'll learn a skill. I'll use my skill to make money. I'll use money to do business. I'll use the profit my business to do politics. How does that sound? Sounds amazing. Exactly. The reason why is that if you're going to politics with that money, you cannot succeed. So why don't I build the money chain first and fund the politics from there? You know. Okay, tell me the other thing you're asking your friend. You're saying something else? No, I was just telling him to write that down for me. Sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. It's a consultant. Let me kind of play it out. I'm joking. <laughs> Praise Thank God. Thank you. See, I want to show you how everybody finds clarity. They find clarity by one thing. What outcome do you want first? Let me tell you how girls choose boyfriends. Because this thing works in relationships. What? It's a table. This is how girls use boyfriend. Look. Money. Oh, money first before look. Money. Look. What's the next thing? Height. Is it funny? Then we say maybe it's a Christian or not a Christian. When that one comes lower. Hold on. So, guess what? They will choose the boy. They're not say want to make it the husband. No. It's Gary that makes Eba. You understand? So once you choose Gary, you know you have Eba. Uh-huh. So all the things that make for good husband and father, they are not here. Let me ask you something. Why do you like your father? Because he's handsome. Because he's tall. Why do you like your father? Name, name, name. Who loves his or father here? Why do you like your father? He's very intentional about you. Oh, my father is very intentional about me. I intentional. And another person again? He 
supports me. Support. Yes. What else? He prioritizes me. P. All those qualities. Are they here? So what happens is that you choose this person and hope that with your supernatural power, you will turn him into a husband. It's Gary that makes what ever. And the same thing applies to what? The women. The same thing applies to the women. When, when, when men want to choose wives. <laughs> That's what men look for. They look for sexy, they look for color, they look for what? Height. Which of these things makes a good mom? You know, say she can look cool. Did you look? <laughs> you know, say she's not patient. <laughs> you know, she's not supportive of my vision. What are you looking for? You got what you bought. Enjoy it. This year, let's be intentional. All of you that have parents, ask yourself, what are the key things I want to teach my parents, my kids? Like me now, yesterday I asked my, I asked my three children, I said that, what, what do you like about your dad? One of my kids says, my dad is very prayerful. I said, that's good, because I want to teach them that. One of my kids says, my dad supports me a lot. And one of them said, my dad is very intelligent. And the reason why is that, is that my, and one that said my dad supports me a lot told me, anytime I feel down about life and my academics, he said, I remember the things you tell me to say and I keep saying them because I intentionally make sure that my kids grow up with a lot of confidence. Because once you train that confidence, they will do a lot better in life. So one thing you hear my kids say to myself is, you know, for example, I don't, like, I don't allow my kids to laugh at each other. I, I don't think it's a healthy thing. The world will always laugh at them, but I mean, they can laugh, but there's a way to get extreme. You know, like, oh, no, no, I don't allow. I feel as if it makes them coward in. But the reason I'm able to do that is that you start from what outcomes. So I want to say, so what, so, so the first thing is this, what is your outcome? So what people focus is that people focus on task, not what outcomes. See, let's go back to the scripture and read again, and we're going to close. Were you blessed already today? I, I think you should make sure that all the services in the fourth service this month you must attend, because I think you really need it. Yeah. See, what, go back. It says, it says, the labor of the foolish man weary as ever. So there's a lot of energy he said, the labor of the flesh worried every one of them because he does not know how to what? Go into what? A city. So the first thing is this. You need to have an outcome. Then the second thing is that you need to have a pathway. A pathway is that what do I have to do to achieve my outcome? If there's an outcome you have that you don't know what to do, please tell me. Let me just solve one or two and we close. And this is why we pray. You know why we pray? Because in the place of prayer, we have clever outcome. Through prayers, we have what? we have clever outcomes. That we have clarity to prayer. This is why we pray. So during this fasting and praying, one of the things you want to pray about is that God will give you clever outcomes. Glory to God. Alright. If there's a place where you have an outcome but you don't know what to do, can you tell me? Hands up, please. Hands up. Thank you, my brother. Give, give this guy the microphone. There's a lady with a scarf. Give him. There's someone at the far back. There's a lady with a scarf. Yeah. Where's the, yeah, the guy first, right? Yeah. So, I want to transform the creative industry. What? I want to transform the African creative industry. Okay. I want people to, I want creatives to make, to make generational wealth. Okay. I want them to be mentally stable. Okay. Um, because that's where I feel like a lot of people, especially a lot of creatives deal with a lot of mental Sorry, what's your health. outcome again? Um, I want to transform the creative industry. That's not an outcome, that's a statement. Okay. Um, what yeah. the, when you transform them, how, how, how oh. is it? So that's what I was saying. So the fact that um, 
I want I want creatives to have better mental health because um, I want well, them to be financially see, deeper. See, let me tell you something. The way you know an outcome and a tax is that a tax focus on what you are going to do, an outcome focus on what it looks like when you have done it. So the reason, the major problem you have right now is that you don't have an outcome. You have a task. So go back and think about your tax and turn to an outcome. Okay, the other lady with the scarf. Yeah. The lady with the scarf. Yeah. Do you have a microphone? Someone has raised up a hand. Wh where's the person? Chinelo, you've said nothing today. You're thinking about your whole life already, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 So for me, I want You need to hold the microphone closer. I want to relocate from Nigeria. You want to relocate from Nigeria? Yes. Good. And I'm stuck between Canada and Australia. Have you made up your mind where you want to relocate to? Sir? Have you made up your mind where you want to relocate to? This is dripping. Canada and Australia. You want to relocate. Okay. Stuck Good. Coast. Relocate. Relocate. Okay. So that's the outcome. You want to relocate. Is it Canada or Australia or any of the two? I don't know what, what to push you. So why do you want to relocate? For better chances of... What? Survival. Australia has my family. And no, no, no. Why do you want to relocate? Why do you want to relocate? For better chances of survival. Australia has your family? Yes. So you want to go and meet your family? Yes. Is there no family in Nigeria? No. There's no family. Okay. Then Canada has what? Just Canada. It's Canada? <laughs> yes. I don't know anybody there. You don't know anybody there? So what do you want for your future? And the reason why... No, I what do you want for your future? I want to... I'm a medical doctor and I want to switch career at the moment. And I'm actually confused... No, hold on. You need to answer my question so that you don't okay. confuse me too. All right. Yeah. What do you want when you are 50 years old? I want to have made a change in the mental health sector. Mental health sector? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, good. Is that where you are switching to right now? Yes. Good. Which countries focus on mental health? Canada or Australia? Both. Both. Okay, good. And um, I tried what? Australia. I tried Australia twice last year and got rejected. That's why I started considering Canada. number Canada. No, it's okay. What you need to do is that you can go to you can go to Canada and Canada can be a stepping stone to Australia. You can go to Canada and Canada can be a stepping stone to Australia. Then another thing is that maybe the pathway I don't know what pathway you're using to go to Australia. Maybe it's not working. Maybe you have to try another pathway. You know. So if, if Australia is blocked, you can use Canada as a stepping stone to what? Australia. If you go to Canada for five years, you get the passport. Then with the passport, you can migrate to Australia and be with your family. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. There's someone at the back. Yes. Please give her the microphone. Or him the microphone. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. I can't see you, though. <laughs> It's at the far back, at the, at the back, back, back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. Thank you. Um, I work in education and I want to um, create lasting change in the educational policies, especially in Nigeria and Africa as a whole. What does that mean? Okay. Um, things are pretty different, especially um, how we. Um, I've heard you. I just said I don't know okay. what you said. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm what I'm saying to you is that you have no clarity. What do you want to achieve? When you're done, what will we see? Okay, you, my, you, my see the, you see the challenge? Is, this clarity issue, eh? Because you know what you want to do, but what do you want to, what do you want to achieve at the end? So he said, I want to do policy. I've heard you. So at the end of it, what do you want to achieve? It's going to be a statement. Yes. At, at the moment, I am into instructional design and I'm focused on elementary grade, literacy especially. But then the, the course I'm doing is very broad. So there are very many areas. You can go to higher ed, you can go to corporate training and you know, it's enticing. It seems like at the top, the higher you go, the more prospects and the more opportunities you have. So, um, as much as I'm, I'm working on something now, I have a club, I have students enrolled, um, I have registrations in, 
in UK, in South Africa. We have touched like four continents and we're in four countries. We're open to expand. But I... What do you want as an outcome? Ah! My sister, you've taken three minutes to tell me the story of Jerusalem to Jericho. Okay. Let's appreciate that. Let's appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. So maybe this year, maybe that's why your prayers are difficult to answer because God does not understand. Because if I'm meant to be God now, God says, oh yeah, whatever I say, confirm it for her. What would I confirm today? That you have branches in South Africa, Ghana, you've done four countries. What do you want to what achieve? Look at wine press. We are believing God that 1,000 souls will get saved. Very clear. We can count it. Decision cards. We are believing that 2,500 people will be healed. 3,500 people that have marital delay will have marital breakthrough. 10,000 people will have career, business, financial, and approval issue sorted out. Did you see how clear that outcome is? That's an outcome. Praise God. This is why you need to pray. Holy Spirit, grant me clarity so that I can have a better outcome. Shall we pray? Stand on your feet, please. Were you blessed today?